Hey everyone, so last week I released a video on whether or not you should make your own puff pastry. Hopefully I can explain more in detail in this video if it's worth it or not, but since I have some puff pastry available, I might as well attempt a Japanese inspired apple turnover that I had in Yokohama, Japan. This is the shop I went to in Japan and at a glance, this looks very similar to apple turnovers that you may normally get, with the exception being that it has some pastry cream stuffed inside. I was shook after I had my first bite and I knew I had to recreate it when I came back, so let's give it a shot right now. Alright, first things first is we're going to make our pastry cream since we'll need to chill it down. I'm going to separate 6 eggs and only use the yolks. Since we're not making a meringue, I just manhandle it by using my hands to separate the yolks and then we're just going to continue with the rest of the eggs. Don't throw out the egg whites by the way, that's just silly. Save them for an omelet or something. Now to our egg yolks, we're going to add in half a cup of sugar, give it a good mix, then add in 3 tablespoons of flour and 1 teaspoon of cornstarch and mix to combine again. Once everything is nice and smooth, we'll now start heating up our milk. This here is 2 cups of whole milk with 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you want to be extra bougie, you can use a vanilla bean, but vanilla extract was all I had, so make do. We want to heat the milk up slowly until simmering. You can tell by some bubbles starting to form around the edges of the milk, and it should look something like this. Once it's ready, it's time to temper our egg mixture. What we need to do is add a bit of this hot milk to the egg mixture and mix. What this will do is heat up the egg mixture slowly so we don't end up with scrambled eggs instantly. Definitely not what you want to do. I like to do this until I poured out half my milk and then we're going to pour all the mixture back into the pot. Now heat this up gently and as it heat up it'll eventually get thick which is what we want. Make sure to stir here and there so the bottom doesn't get burnt and eventually it will end up with this consistency where it will catch on the whisk but be heavy enough to fall from it. I will then strain it to make sure there are no lumps and then once it's nice and smooth, we're going to let it cool down just a bit before we cover the top with plastic wrap and make sure the plastic touches the top or it's going to form a hard film if you don't. Then we leave it in the fridge to cool while we prep our apples. Here I have 4 different types of apples. I don't recall each variety 100% but I'm sure one of them was a Honeycrisp and another one was a Fuji. I like to use a bunch of different ones because I'm not sure if there's any scientific evidence for this but I feel as though different apples all have their own benefits. So if you have a blend of each, it'll give you a little bit of everything. Feel free to use whatever you like though. We'll want to skin our apples, then cut around the core so you'll have 4 chunks. Now we want to dice up these chunks into bite sized pieces roughly around the same size. Once you dice up all these apples, we're going to add in a third of a cup of brown sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a tiny sprinkle of cardamom, and a pinch of salt. We'll also squeeze in half a lemon as well to balance out the flavor and stop the apples from oxidizing. Give them all a good mix until well combined and then we're going to start cooking these apples to make the filling. I'm going to add in 2 tablespoons of butter and once it's melted, we're going to start cooking our apples. Apples have a lot of water in them so this will slowly cook out the water so that the brown sugar and the natural sugars in the apples will slowly start to caramelize. I feel like that's why caramel and apples are such a natural and great combination together. After slowly caramelizing the apples and sugars, it'll start to thicken like this, which is what we want as the filling shouldn't be too runny. Transfer your filling to cool down while we prep our puff pastry to make the turnovers. First things first, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I dust my work surface with some flour and I also flour my puff pastry as well. We don't want it to stick to the work surface. We're going to roll it out to a large rectangle. Take your time but do note we don't want it to heat up too much so just keep that in mind as well. When you finally finish rolling it out you can start taking some measurements. I personally had 5x5 five five inch squares, but feel free to adjust accordingly. I'll trim off the ends so they look a little bit nicer, and as you can tell, there's plenty of excess, so I definitely could have adjusted my measurements, but it's a little late for that. Don't throw away your trimmings though, as they're still delicious and you can bake them still. Once I have all my squares cut, I'm going to take some of my apple filling and place it on one end. I'll wet the edges with some egg wash, which is just a beaten egg and then wrap it over on one side so it will form a triangle. Make sure to seal the edges and you can always crimp it with a fork as well to make it look a little nicer. You'll have to adjust your filling ratios, 
as you want a decent amount, but not so much that you can't wrap the pastry dough over it. Here's me crimping the edges with a fork when it was already sealed to seal it even better and to make sure it looks a little nicer as well since I wanted to give this as a gift to some people. I'm going to take a sharp knife and make a slit or two on top so some air can escape and it won't explode while baking. The final step is to brush everything with an egg wash and top it with some sugar before we stick it in the oven to bake for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. The final product should be nice and brown and we'll transfer it over to a wire rack to let it cool before we pipe it with our pastry cream. To pipe, I use a Ziploc bag that I cut the corner of and then I insert my piping tip into it. Then I fill up my piping bag, or Ziploc bag in this case, with my pastry cream and then I squeeze it into each individual apple turnover. So now I actually have some small apple turnovers and big ones. The big ones are the ones I use with the homemade puff pastry and the small ones are the frozen supermarket ones. So I wanted to compare the difference between them and I say flakiness wise, they're around the same, but you can distinctly taste that difference with the homemade one just because I used that nicer butter. So that would be the reason you would make your own puff pastry. However, whether or not you do make your own, the filling itself alongside this pastry cream makes for a wonderful dessert that's a perfect gift for your friends during the holidays. So let me know what you think if you made them. I think they're mad good. So everyone, thanks for watching my video and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and follow my Instagram at WeCanCooks. Thanks for the support everyone.